Starship Troopers is a keystone in sci-fi. It's so omnipresent, it even affects Mecha as we know it. Not even Armored Core is free from doing its part. Would you like to know more? Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers, released in 1959, was the definitive war sci-fi novel. He presents to us a society of total war, where the right to citizenship is earned by those who serve the state, and how the scars that society brings may forever change you, for better or for worse. It makes the claim that mankind seeks conflict by nature, and those who experience the pain of war should be the ones to lead. Now, whether you agree with Heinlein or not, the novel is certainly interesting. From it, we received an abundance of sci-fi tropes that are still being used to this day. Power armor, mini nukes, orbital drops, and of course, the bug war. From Halo to Mass Effect, the Warhammer to Aliens, to more overt parodies like Helldivers and its absolutely stellar sequel, most of modern science fiction can trace some lineage back to Heinlein's book. It's like the Mew of militaristic sci-fi, the common ancestor to which all future war evolved from. Today, though, I'd like to take a small gander at the 1988 OVA Uchu no Senshi, aka Starship Troopers. Before the Verhoeven masterpiece, there was this. Dedicated to the late Heinlein, the OVA is a coming-of-age story, much like the book. And unlike the movie, it comes packaged with one of the coolest power armor designs in the history of anything ever. The Marauder. Before you say it's generic, consider that this media predates things like Halo, Fallout, and most of their modern contemporaries. The Marauder, armed with a thruster pack and an array of weapons including a goddamn mini-nuke rack, is the original power armor that codified the concept. We'll get into the details of the suit later though. Unlike the Verhoeven interpretation, the OVA is less of a political satire, and more so a grim look into Johnny Rico's boot camp life. In fact, most of the political nuance and world building of Starship aren't even touched upon, in favor of focus entirely on the down-to-earth grunt aspects of joining the mobile infantry. The entire concept of service granting citizenship is not mentioned, there's no insight into the meritocratic nature of the Federation at all, and the arachnids, while awesome and freaky, are barely elaborated upon and radically different than any other interpretation. No context is given to the setting, so unless you're already familiar with the world, there's gonna be a big disconnect. There's also a clear focus on Rico realizing that war is something to be survived rather than glorifying it as the necessary crucible. It's still a fun watch if you're a fan of the universe, or just like military shows with cool mechs. And at the time of writing this, it's free on YouTube too. Not even Armored Core was safe from the trooper train, as even this franchise has dabbled in using their massive mecha to mobilize against multi-legged monstrosities. Specifically, three missions in Armored Core 1, that would in turn be referenced in almost every game in the franchise going forward. Which, given the blood this franchise has, Makes sense. Sunrise, the studio behind Gundam and a big publisher for Armored Core, was behind the aforementioned anime adaptation back in the 80s. The mechanical design was done by one Kazutaka Miyatake, a man with a robust line of work that includes the likes of Space Battleship Yamato, Gundam, and Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Specifically, he was responsible for the absolutely iconic Zentradi power armor, as well as their battleships. And like Shoji, he even swung by for Armored Core 6. It should be noted, however, that the original design for the nuclear gorilla was done by Nayuki Keto around 1975. His artwork is some of the most stunning science fiction art I have ever laid my eyes upon. So much time and effort was spent into making the Marauder feel like an actual, functional piece of equipment. It's beautiful. With how closely Keto worked with Mr. Heinlein for this art, it's also safe to say that this is the most accurate rendition of the Marauder ever put to paper. That said, Miyatake's work is very much a powerful iteration and expansion of the Kato design, adding additional variants and a more imposing silhouette with the enlarged thruster pack, a trait shared with many of his earlier power armor designs from across, 
The Marauder honestly feels like the focus of the OVA some episodes, with lots of love being put in its presentation, operation, and general appearance. Hell, it's the first thing you'll see if you start watching the show. Now, I don't know if the creepy giant bugs that shoot twin link laser beams at Mecha are intended to be a reference to this OVA, but it's a coincidence that I find fun. Before we dive into this arc, let's hit up the garage so we can do our part, shall we? Launcher? Check. Y rack? Kind of. Rifle? Good to go. This arc starts with an urgent request. An outbreak of giant bugs sprung up outside of Gal City. Hey, those are the guys we did a terrorism on in the Valkyrie video. And people are getting hurt. Corporate wants you to punch through the hive and put a stop to the infestation before it can spread. Diving into the hive leads you to some of the more unique architecture in the game, too with the usual factories and facilities being traded out for organic cave systems full of dead-end cells, water pools, and bug ambushes. Penetrating a natural setting like this in a mech tickles a primal itch in my soul in the same way something like Metroid does, it's great. After a long trek, we finally meet the queen, and she's... weird. What look like twin link lasers pop up from her back. Odd. Despite these interesting features, the queen goes down all the same. System switched to normal mode. Our employers go on to speculate that these organisms are in fact bioweapons created by a rival company. Turns out they were dead on the money. Chrome had taken the liberty of playing God, making super scribs as a cheaper, biological alternative to combat MTs. Our run in with them earlier was simply the field test. It's time to put a stop to this. Breaking into the laboratory, we're tasked with freeing every superbug we can find. We believe the targets are scattered throughout the facility. Release them as soon as you find them. There it is. I believe the device on the wall is the lock mechanism. Destroy it. Trouble in the test bags. Lab and security personnel proceed to the site immediately. I think we've been noticed. Hurry up and get to the next one. Once the job is done, you go back to the job postings for new work now that this is taken care of. And then we find this. Alert! Security Some fucking let out all the bugs. What sort of fiend could have done this? They're lucky we're here to save the day. Swooping in and eradicating the bug menace that someone so callously unleashed upon these poor souls. For the right price, of course. God, the sheer hilarity of the corporation we actively assaulted. Hiring us to fix the problem we were paid to cause. It's just... Oh, it's goofy as hell, I love it. We're playing both sides to max out the profits, and we can't even say it's evil because our victims are corporate douchebags. God, I love this game. Thank you for humoring my love of the Starship Troopers OVA today. I'll admit, fitting this into an Armored Core build video was a little awkward, but the fact that Armored Core shares so much DNA with the things I love just gives me excuses for tangents like these. If you like the art in these videos and are able to safely do your part, any help would be sincerely appreciated. Feel free to check out my commission sheet in the description below, along with other ways of support. 
If you want to stay tuned for more mecha videos, feel free to like and subscribe, and leave your thoughts down in the comment below. And remember, cherish your loved ones, and stay safe out there.